We're turning tiny things into bigger things. Hang, Hang on, on for the loop. loop. Four, three, two, one. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And today we are talking all about portable things. So I have a little game for us. On these cards are big things and we have to come up with the portable version. Are you ready? Absolutely. I know all about portable things. Really? Yeah, I really do. I mean, sure, why not? Let's go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. Okay, Wi-Fi. Hotspot. Ooh, very good. Mm, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, house. Uh, RV. Yes. Yes. So good, whoa. Bed. Sleeping bag. Nice. <laughs> Computer. A uh, phone, mobile yes, phone. Yes, that works. Cellular phone. Cellular device. Toilet. Porta potty. Oh, yeah, that was quick. I know my porta potties. <laughs> Clearly know a lot about portable things. <gasps> Wait, we missed one though. What about church? Oh, yeah, what's the portable version of church? We should probably start with what makes church church. Ooh, that's good. What makes church church? Maybe you think of a really fancy building like this, one that I don't have any clothes fancy enough to go to. Maybe you think of a sign like this that you pass on your way to school. We love hurting people. Kind of confusing. This church reminds me of the small town church I grew up going to, the kind of church that you want to take your picture in front of. Maybe you're a Lego master and you think of a building like this when you think of church, one that's just built brick by brick. Over the years, church has looked really different. There's been different styles, different traditions. When I was growing up, church was a place that had really old songbooks, long wooden pews that were so uncomfortable to sit in, and I had to dress really fancy every Sunday and Wednesday. But what is the capital C Church? When we're talking about church with the lowercase c, we're talking about a building, a place that we can go to, like those pictures we looked at earlier. We're talking about a place that we gather to grow, give, and go out. But how was the church created? Well, Acts 2 actually gives us a small glimpse of what the early church looked like. It looked like people, like you and me, that were a family that had different gifts and talents. They had different strengths and weaknesses, but they all knew they belonged. They were united because they loved Jesus. They ate together, prayed together, they did life together, and everyone had a place. That's what the church is about. So why is there sometimes a capital C on the word church? Well, when we're talking about the capital C church, it's so much more than the building. It deserves a capital C because we are the church. You are a portable representation of Jesus here in the world. It's a group of people passionate about Jesus and the Holy Spirit living and working in them. We get to show the world what Jesus is all about. So you are portable. And you are portable. We are all a tiny part of the big body of Christ. Ooh, Ooh. hello, mystery hand. Good to see you. I hope your summer's going well. Mystery hand is a portable version of mystery hand. All right, <laughs> so make the biggest version of tiny items we give you. Example, if we give you grapes, make the biggest grape. In each round, you have two minutes. To stick it all together, choose between these three adhesives. Duct tape, pack of gum, or cake icing. You may only use one adhesive each round, and once you have used that adhesive, you may not use it again. So round one, we are building with... Ooh, oh, cheese nice. puffs! Huh, I would say frosting. Yeah, I... Do you want to frost as well? go with frosting as well. Okay, great. Well... Well, 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 Jamie. Oh my goodness, we had the exact same idea. Did we? We did. <laughs> we'll just have to see who does it faster. Oh. I like that Ricky, Ricky's always like loosey-goosey on these challenges and I'm always like laser focused. <laughs> All right, I panicked. I panicked. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, I kind of panicked. All right, I'm gonna have to change strategies here. That's what I was thinking. This is fun. Five, four, three, two, one. Ha ha. Oh, I think you might have won. <laughs> yeah, see? I think Ricky wins this one. Meh. All right, so Tommy's going to come in and judge. Tommy. All right, the winner. By a cheese ball. 
<laughs> is Ricky. Yay! Yay, Ricky, well done. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm super excited. Round two, what do we got? Let's see it. Ooh. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Woo! Ooh. Ooh. Toothpicks, yeah. woohoo. Yeah. Okay. okay, oh, <laughs> we're like repeating each other. Uh, duct tape. Um, I'm gonna go with chewing gum. Thank you. Oh. Great. I instantly regret I hope, this. I know, I hope I didn't make the wrong choice. That's oh. what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Three, two, one, go. Okay, oh, so how's here? I didn't think about having to chew all this gum. Oh, my. Oh, no, actually. Do it like that. All right, Ricky. Mm. You need to stay where you are. Mm. Okay. <laughs> are you going to be there for a while chewing? I sure hope so. Chewing the gum. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, you stay there. Oh, man. This is... You, I made such a bad yeah, idea. Right so I'm trying to think. This is a toothpick for the Jolly Green Giant. This is a toothpick for... <sighs> Sasquatch? Sasquatch. How about... You? Oh, he's he's busy chewing. I am. <laughs> this I is need a, more gum. I need more teeth. Uh, you, hey, I need more people here, to give chew me a piece. I'll chew a piece for you. Thank you. How's it going? It's Minty fresh bread. very slow. I didn't realize how much chewing I have. I was hoping the gum would be pre-chewed. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, man. Even. Three, two, one. There we mm. go. It's a toothpick. <laughs> Making a toothpick musical. All right. Here we go. It's a toothpick. That was good. Look, uh -huh. That was very good. And I would pick it up if that were possible. It is a toothpick in length. Yeah. For display purposes. Yeah. It's like a toothpick you'd see in a museum mm -hmm. that you would look at and respect, but not use. Jamie. Woo! Okay. <laughs> All right. Very good, Jamie. Thank you. Well done to you as well. I mean, your breath smells way fresher than mine does. Thank you. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God lives in you? 1 Corinthians 3.16. If you could go back to the city of Jerusalem during Bible times, the biggest thing you'd see is the temple. This beautiful building was designed by King David and built by King Solomon, and they believed that it was the home of the God of the universe. Wait, I thought God's home was in heaven. Well, the whole point of this earthly temple is that it's the place that overlaps with God's heavenly home. The temple is where God lives and rules all creation as king. That's cool, but even Solomon, who built the temple, didn't believe that it could contain the God of the universe, right? Yeah, the building was just a symbol, and it pointed to the fact that all of creation is God's temple. And that's actually what the first page of the Bible, Genesis 1, is all about. Really? It says that creation is God's temple? Well, it doesn't need to say it. The whole story shows it. In Genesis 1, God creates an ordered world out of a dark wasteland by speaking in a series of seven days. Then on the seventh day, God's presence fills creation as he takes up his rest and rule. Similarly, the tabernacle and later the temple were built and dedicated in a series of seven speeches and seven days, after which the priest or king could rest and rule in God's presence. Ah, so all of creation is where God intends to dwell. It's like his temple. In the temple, the Israelite priests and Levites were to work and to keep the temple in God's presence. This is exactly the job description given to humanity in the Garden of Eden. So these humans were the first priests. But instead of ruling with God, they wanted to rule on their own terms, and they're exiled from the Garden Temple. And like Adam and Eve, Israel's leaders also wanted to rule on their own terms, and they too were exiled. The temple was destroyed, and this left them wondering, did God give up on Israel? And here we come to the story of Jesus. He said that through him, God's presence and rule was coming into our world in a new way. And he presented himself as a new kind of priest. But Jesus wasn't a priest, and he didn't work in the temple. Right. Jesus said that God's presence, his rest and rule, was filling the world through his own life, death, and resurrection. Jesus was claiming that he was the true temple, and this new temple would expand out to include all of creation. That's a really 
big claim, and it got even bigger. After his resurrection, Jesus said that God's presence would come to dwell in and among his followers so that they would become mini temples. Communities of people where God rests and rules. Exactly. This is the Bible's vision of the church, which is described as a temple. Not a building, but people. Yeah, like when Peter says, you all are living stones built up as a temple for God's spirit to dwell. So at the end of the story, do we ever get a new physical temple? Well, not exactly. What we see is a renewed cosmic temple, just like Genesis 1. And this new creation doesn't need a temple building because through Jesus, all creation is now the place where God rests and rules the world with his people. Okay, so we have round three. We are stuck with one adhesive item. For me, it's gonna be duct tape. For Jamie, it's gonna be gum. Gum. I, I think I'm living in a world of regret right now. All right, let's bring <laughs> on round three. Into gum. Oh boy. Oh, what is that noise? Oh, we're doing it. Ah, Woohoo! Oh. I chose hey. wisely. We have spoons. Spoons. Glorious. Grab spoons. the spoon. Okay, grab that. That is gone. I'm not totally sure how I'm going to make Make the biggest spoon. The Start biggest chewing some spoon. gum, Jamie. That's oh, I'm going to gonna see if I can try to, I don't know. Start chewing. I don't know. I think this is going to be great. Oh, I don't think this is going to, I don't know. Jamie, are you not chewing gum? You no, just chew. I'm trying to make this without my gum. Jamie, you without need to chew a bunch of gum right now. I'm panicking. I, I don't, don't know. Th Jamie, you, I don't you're know. You're just piling spoons next to one another. I thought maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thirty and seconds. Combining. Oh my goodness. Combining. And then oh. oh. Come on. And Combining. Three, two, one. We have spoon, everybody! That's so good! Now, may I make a request? We have more cheese bowls. May yeah. I have made demonstrates? <laughs> oh, thank goodness you have your giant spoon. Mm hmm. Oh, you did it! You did it! Keep going! Oh, oh man. That's so great! Success! Tommy! You oh, are. Oh, careful with your giant spoon! Sorry, Tommy! So oh, right, we're judging. Yeah, Ricky wins. I, I think so. <laughs> Ricky, I have a question. Okay. You know how they lay out silverware in like its proper form? Where would giant spoon go? Would it go between the mm. salad fork and the, the soup spoon or? Yes. Um, it would go on the top. So you know you typically go left, right? It would go on top mm -hmm. so you can reach on someone else's plate and just get whatever they have. Oh, great idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I call it the mega spoon. So Legos, my brother and I thought about these constantly growing up because he left them all over the house and I stepped on them all of the time. But why are we talking about this little brick? Because each and every one of us, we get to be the living stone, the living brick that God gets to use to make a place that people know that they belong. The church is so much more than a building. The church is the people. The capital C church is you. You going out and showing the world the love of Jesus and inviting everyone else to be a part of it too. A lowercase church is any gathering place where imperfect people grow closer to God and each other. It's a space where we remember the grace of Jesus. We learn better ways to love God and others. But it doesn't mean much if we don't also become love outside of those gathering spaces. We don't leave God behind in a building. We're portable. We are living stones carrying His temple everywhere we go. You are the church, loving and inviting everyone to belong in our family. So let's go out and invite the world to what Jesus is all about. So uh, I won round one. That Jamie was won. the biggest oh, cheese ball. Yes, the biggest yes. cheese ball. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jamie won round two, Doo -doo -doo. which is the biggest toothpick. Yes. And I won round three, the big spoon. Uh, most impressive big spoon I've ever seen. Thank you. Yes. Not only is it beautiful, it's functional. Yeah. Yeah. I think I might have a patent pending on my hands. Ricky's Giant Spoons. 
Ooh, or uh, I, I want to call it. Wait, no. Full spoon. Oh, that's good. Full spoon. <laughs> Full spoon ahead. Full spoon ahead, indeed. <laughs> Plug into a gathering place. Find a community where you can grow, give, and go out. Remember that the church is not a building. You are the capital C church. You are the portable representation of Jesus Christ in the world. You carry God's temple with you wherever you go. Find your tiny part in the big body of Christ. Go be portable. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Okay, let's see that big spoon in action. Here we go. Bring his big spoon. Woo. Can I get in there? Coming to you, stores everywhere. Look at that. Coming to you in stores. <laughs> All right, if you liked this challenge, you guys have to check out the creativity games. It was super fun, and we had to get super creative with not a lot of instruction. And don't forget to subscribe and get creative in the comments. Leave mm -hmm. us a creative challenge for us to try. I have to say, that's a creatively wonderful idea. Oh, okay. Look at him go. Oh, okay.